My precious spring break was this week, and to celebrate the occasion, I decided to go to the local library and check out a video game for a few days. Three titles caught my eye. Spider-Man Edge of Time, a direct clone of a game that I already own, Jaws Ultimate Predator, a game that I could tell by the title was probably going to suck rancid monkey butt, and Captain America Super Soldier. And since this is my vacation, I thought that I'd select the game least likely to make me hate life itself. I have to tread lightly here because my best friend watches these videos and is a huge Captain America fan, but this needs to be said. The Captain America movie licensed game is not very good. The story of the game is that Captain America finds out that Hydra is building super advanced weapons in a huge castle, and you spend the entire game after the first level poking around this one castle, destroying assorted Hydra supplies and villains. The game doesn't really have a main villain. You start going after some guy called Varen von Strucker, but he gets killed off in the third level. Then you fight Madame Hydra, and she goes away in the fifth level. You eventually fight Iron Cross and the Red Skull, but they aren't even mentioned until close to the end of the game. I know that Hydra as a whole is supposed to be the main villain in the movie, but give us a clear overall villain for the video game for crying out loud. The game's combat system is pretty much directly copied from Batman Arkham Asylum, and I swear Captain America has some of the exact same combat animations as Batman in Arkham Asylum. You press the B button to strike enemies, and you press the Z button to counter when a prompt appears. What's weird slash annoying slash bad design is that you also use the Z button to finish stunned enemies and to deflect bullets from armed enemies, and it's confusing slash disorienting when you use the same button command to perform three critical tasks in combat. The thing that sets Captain America's combat apart from Arkham Asylum is the fact that Captain America has a ton of special enemies with special attacks and weaknesses. This is the game's main gimmick, but also the game's main downfall. In Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, the game only throws a few special enemies at you at one time, and only a few enemies run up to attack you at once. Captain America does the exact opposite. Once the game introduces a few special enemies, every single fight in the game will have mostly special enemies, and the game's AI will have all of the enemies bum rush you at once. It's kind of hard to explain why this is so annoying, so I'll use an example. You've got enemies with tasers that cannot be hurt unless you counter them, assassins that are immune to all attacks unless you use the shield to stun them, and enemies with guns that you have to block with the shield, and all of them charge you at once. You have to carefully aim the shield at the assassins to take them out, but you can't do that because the guys with tasers are running up to bludgeon you in the head. You can't take out the guys with tasers because and if you stop to counter and fight the taser guys, the assassins will turn you into minced meat. You can't run away to focus on dealing with either of them because the douchebags with guns are firing a hail of bullets at you. You can't block the gunshots with the shield because the close range enemies will take the opportunity to bash your skull in. Because all of the enemies bomb rush you at once and all of the enemies have vastly different ways in which they must be taken down, combat becomes an unmanageable cluster crap around the game's fourth level. You're basically expected to deal with four or five radically different enemies at the same time, which sometimes just isn't possible unless you get lucky. If nothing else, Captain America really demonstrates how perfectly designed the Arkham games are. In Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, the special enemies are relatively few in number, and the enemies don't all bum rush you at once. You start fighting the enemies, being careful to react to enemy attacks, and carefully planning around the special enemies that you need special tactics to defeat. In the Arkham games, the combat is all about strategy and reflexes. In Captain America, the combat is all about swamping you with enemies that have increasingly cheap and unfair tactics. I swear, when I was playing the fourth level of this game, I almost rage quit and decided to do this review without having beaten the game. The combat pissed me off that much. Against my better judgment, I persevered and pushed forward, only to find that the combat got worse from there. You know what's a great idea? Mixing enemies that require you to use the shield with enemies that take away your shield if you even try to use it. That's freaking brilliant! The Arkham games also rarely put enemies with guns in its combat section. Do you know why they do that? Because putting enemies with guns in a melee fighting game is cheap and unfair. In Captain America, once you get past the starting levels, there are multiple enemies with guns in just about every single fight. You can't even run up to the jackoffs with guns to kill them first because once you start punching one of them, the other guy with a gun still shoots you. What the hell does the game want me to do to clear out these enemies without getting killed? Captain America is the first game I've played in a long time that has made me scream at my television. This game pissed me the hell off. Off. The game seems to be under the delusion that the shield is much more useful in combat than it actually is. The only time that you'll ever use the shield in combat is when you're forced to in order to exploit an enemy's weakness. Because it's a pain trying to aim the shield and the shield doesn't do much more than mildly annoy enemies, trying to use the shield in combat is a massive waste of time. For the sake of my own sanity, let's discuss the more positive aspects of the game. In between combat sections, you have to make your way through little platforming and puzzle sections. About midway through the game, the puzzles actually become kind of stimulating, and the puzzles do a lot to shake up the game and keep it from becoming repetitive. If you happen to like the game, there are plenty of extras and unlockables to keep you playing the game multiple times. Each level has one artifact, three prisoners of war, four Zola challenges, and ten red skull bombs to find, and there's no way that you're going to find all of the extras in one go. 
Zola is the Weasley Hydra scientist from the movie, and he'll challenge you to do things like smash targets, navigate a room, or kill enemies in a very short time limit. What annoys me is that when you start a challenge, oftentimes he'll say, survive this challenge, and I'll give you a cookie. Well, I beat all the challenges in the second and third level, so where are my cookies, dammit? Zola is also apparently supposed to be the main villain of the game, because the final boss fight of the game is against a giant robot that Zola controls with his mind. Wasn't this supposed to take place in World War II? I don't care how advanced Hydra's technology was, there were no giant robots in World War II. What's really bizarre is that the final boss fight has a small section that rips off the scarecrow scenes from Arkham Asylum where you have to move carefully through cover to avoid a giant death ray. Except you know how in Arkham Asylum it's very clear where the scarecrow was looking so that you can easily plan out when you move? Captain America does the exact opposite. The game's animations are so lackluster that the death beam just kind of pops in and out of existence, which makes timing your movements very hard and very annoying. It's like the developers of this game set out to copy everything that people loved about Arkham Asylum, and then Rocksteady hired a corporate saboteur to ruin everything that they stole and they succeeded. <laughs> Captain America Super Soldier is a game that has inspired many conflicting thoughts in my mind. On one hand, I really like the platforming and puzzles. On the other hand, the combat pissed me off so much that I considered rage quitting three different times. There was one point during my playthrough that I thought I'd have to stop playing because, for reasons that have not been adequately explained, Captain America kept falling through a solid rail that I needed to cross in order to continue the level. I don't know much about Captain America, but I'm pretty sure that his superpowers don't include the ability to phase through solid matter. When I booted up the game the next morning, he crossed the rail just fine, and rather than rejoicing because I could continue playing, I thought to myself, SHIT, NOW I HAVE TO KEEP PLAYING! And as a general rule of thumb, if the thought of continuing to play a game gives you nightmares, then the game probably isn't your cup of tea. Captain America Super Soldier gets the thumbs down from me. Give it a shot if you want, but approach with extreme caution. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to use the rest of my spring break to study for an applied thermodynamics test. Fun!